What's up, YouTube? My name is RJ. I am with Harbuck Media. The topic of discussion for today, is your content performing well? You've decided to create video content for the year 2022. We are getting to the end of the year and you're wondering, is this thing working? Am I actually seeing the return on investment that I was looking for? But before we get into that content, first drop us a like if you would. If you're not a subscriber, become one today. And don't forget to smash the notification bell so that you're notified of all of our upcoming video content. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down in the comment section. We will do our best to respond to you as quickly as possible. All right, let's get started. Oh, oh, fire and water me. Down to the river. Is your content performing well? Well, that's a question of return on investment. So the first thing we need to discuss is what is your ROI? How are you measuring success when it comes to this social media content? Now, there's a couple of different ways you could be trying to measure that success. Obviously, you could be talking straight up sales. Are you seeing an increase in revenue for your business? And can you directly link that increase in revenue, that increase in sales to this video content? You could also talk about brand management. Are you seeing your brand, your identity as a company increase in standing? Are you becoming more well known in your community and in social media on your different platforms? Are you seeing more subscribers and more followers flocking to your channels? And lastly, viral content. Again, I've said this many times before, this is the hardest ROI to uh, really track or achieve, but some people are looking for that. And, and you could even be looking for all three of these things, and that's totally reasonable but we need to identify what is your primary return on investment? What's that primary number that you're looking for so that you can judge whether or not this thing is actually working for you? So with that in mind, let's take these one at a time. First, let's talk about brand management. One of the primary reasons for using social media is to grow your brand, to use content to teach people, to educate people on what you are as a company, what you do, what problems you solve, what your company culture is, what your values are, and hopefully that in turn will turn into sales, but it all starts with that management of your brand. So if you're not a well-known company, if you're not a well-known business in your local market and internationally, as far as social media is concerned, then that is something to consider. Are you seeing increase in engagement, increase in followers, increase in subscribers, an increase in impressions or likes, comments, that kind of thing? If you are seeing an increase in that, then that proves that you are having a return on an investment. It is worth noting that if you're a startup, a new business, if you didn't really have a social media presence before this new venture into the year 2022 and your video creation and all that kind of stuff, then we do need to keep that in mind as we're looking at that ROI. If you start from zero, obviously it's going to take a while to get that thing going. And you can't only consider your presence on social media. Yes, your your presence on social media is important, but it should also translate to your local environment, your local community. If you've gained some recognition in your local community, that can also be tied to that brand management on your social media. And that's definitely something you wanna consider. Next, let's talk about business growth. That's what we're all here for, right? If you have a business and you're you know venturing into social media content, creating videos, your hope is that it's going to increase your business. Yes, through brand recognition, which we just talked about, but also just flat out sales and increase in revenue that you are going to create more money for your business. Now, when we're talking about videos, it is important to recognize the difference between organic growth and paid advertising. Organic growth is wonderful, but it's fairly unreliable. And so this you have to consider, you have to be pursuing paid advertising if you're looking at an increase in sales, if you're looking to generate those leads. That's not to say that organic growth can't create those things because it can, but it's going to be uh, much more arduous of a task to, to analyze your content in that way to figure out if it's directly responsible for sales. Unless you have a customer that says, I watched your video and now I wanna buy your product, 
organic growth is going to be challenging. With paid advertising, you can then use the social media platform to target specific people that you believe are interested in your services. And so you can create a video and then use an ad to market that video directly to a specific group of people that you think that video is going to speak to and that will then generate that sale that you are looking for. That said, paid advertising is built upon the foundation of organic growth. So this is a process in time. And truly, it takes a minimum of like six months to get this system prepped and ready to open that floodgate. And even then, sometimes it takes longer depending upon the business. Now, that might not be what you wanted to hear. And so let me say that doesn't mean that you can't analyze what you're doing. You can't look back at the past year and judge whether or not you have seen an increase in sales. But what I'm saying is that just because you haven't seen an increase in sales or more specifically the increase in sales that you were expecting, that doesn't mean that it's not working because just like with brand management, this thing takes time and they work together. The longer you've been doing this, the better results you are going to see. Let's talk about viral content. There are people out there that their goal is just simply to go viral, to see their videos reaching millions of people. And again, just like the conversation with organic versus paid, this is possible. I'm not saying that you are not capable of having a viral video, but it's hard to do and it's hard to replicate. It takes a long time for the average person. It takes a long time to gather the, the base of people, the viewership to have consistently high viewed content. So if you're not that person, if you don't already have 100,000 followers, if you only have 100 followers, the chances of your content going viral are much, much lower. That doesn't mean that we can't be expectant or or hopeful of some occasional viral content. It just means that this shouldn't be our primary goal. And if you do actually attain virality, if you are one of the lucky few who has a video that you know takes off, then we need to not expect that of every single video. And let's also scale this back. Let's think about the size of your follower. What is virality for you? If you have a hundred followers and you have a video with 10,000 views, that's viral. For you, that's huge. You have 100 followers and you have 10,000 views. That is massive for your business. If you have 100 followers, you probably need to be satisfied with like 50 views per video. If you have 50 views out of 100 followers, that means that 50% of your people are watching your videos. And of course, it may not actually work out that way. That's you know why you go and you look at the analytics. Are these your followers who are watching your content or is it new people? And that's something that you should look at and we should evaluate. Should we be asking people to follow us? Are there a bunch of people who are watching our content who aren't actually following us? These are important questions to ask. But the point is that you need to keep in mind, how big are you? If you have 100 people, the expectation should never be to have a million views. Honestly, if you have 100 people following you, the expectation should never be to have 10,000 views. You should be happy. You should be thrilled if you get 1,500 views. That's huge if you have 100 followers. So that's just something that we should definitely keep in mind as we discuss this return on investment. Lastly, let's talk about analytics. Now, we kind of already touched base on this, but it's important to recognize that, especially if you don't have a ton of followers, analytics is going to be challenging and it's going to take a long time. You really can't be looking at this on a daily basis. You can't really be looking on, at this on a weekly basis. Now, let's say you had 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yes, if you had 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, you're averaging you know, 250,000 views or uh, you know, 500,000 views on your videos. And then you have a video that drops that has 45,000 views. That's a problem. You can very easily look at that and say, that topic did not resonate. But if you have 100 followers on Instagram and you have one video that gets 25 views, the next video gets 150 views, the video after that gets 1,000 views, that does not necessarily mean that the video with 1,000 views was better than the video with 25 views. The simple fact is that you have 100 followers. 
You're just talking about a completely different pool of people. I say that not to burst a bubble, but to bring things back to reality. It's very easy to get excited about large numbers. And again, if you've got 100 followers and you've got a video with 1,500 views, that's something to be proud of. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the type of video that you should be doing infinitely. If you have 100 subscribers, if you have 100 followers, you need to be doing a bunch of different kind of content. You just need to be spreading yourself out, sharing as much as you can, growing that brand, hopefully converting some of that traffic into sales. And that needs to be your primary focus. It takes years to build that base. And then once you get to that point where you've got 1,000 followers or 10,000 followers, then we can really begin to dive into those analytics and figure out what is really truly resonating with our people. Up into that point, you're honestly gonna have to go with your gut and what is important to your business. What do you think is going to resonate with the people that are buying your products and services? It's really gonna be a lot of that on you or your marketing agency to just figure out what should your voice be. Well, that's it for today. I hope that this video was helpful. I know that this topic could be a little bit discouraging. I hope that it didn't come across that way. I hope that you are in fact encouraged with this video. If you did like this video, if you found the video uh, to be informative, then please drop us a like. If you're not a subscriber, become one today and don't forget to smash the notification bell so that you're notified of all of our upcoming content. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them down in the comment section and we will do our best to respond to you as quickly as possible. Thank you so much again for watching this video all the way through. We'll catch you next time. Oh, oh, fire and water me. Down to the river